Hello everyone, my name is Nastasia and I am so excited to talk about this because it has been on my mind for the past couple of days. In fact, this is something I think about frequently. But the past couple days I've been like, I have to film a video on this. I just don't know why, but I have to. But before we start talking about why women should never ever pay or ask to pay or ask to split the bill on the first date, I wanna give you guys a quick little update. So new background, I am now in Florence, Italy, no longer in Rome. I have moved a little bit up north. It's about an hour and a half train ride to Florence and I love this place. I like it better than Rome personally. The ambiance is better. There's so many cute shops here. I like how it's overall smaller, a bit more peaceful and just the environment has better vibes, in my opinion. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. The only con of this place is it's cold. It's not the warmest, and I'm just kind of bouncing back from respiratory inflammation. So it has not been the greatest experience because I've been a bit sick. As you can see, there's I have this little bump here. So this is, I forgot exactly what this is called lymphatic node inflammation. I don't know, I don't have it on this side. We're getting better, so if you hear some sniffling or anything of that nature, it's cause bouncing back from sickness. I got this cute leather jacket in Florence a couple days ago as well. Absolutely in love. I had to get it because it had red inside and it just looks beautiful. Let's see if I have any more updates. No, not that I'm thinking of. I wanna get started with this video. So, why women should never, ever, ever, ever ask to split the bill 50-50. This is something I'm very, very passionate on. This is a hill I am willing to die on multiple times, right? If I die, get resurrected, die again, resurrected, die, you know, again, get resurrected. It's still the same hill I'm willing to die and get resurrected on over and over and over again. I am also very well aware that some of my content is not going to hit home for certain types of women. That's to be expected. And I hope that one day those women will understand my viewpoints and those types of the, okay. So I'm just going to be straight out honest. Those are the types of women who are brainwashed by modern day feminism. And I know because I used to be that person. I used to be that person back in 2020 and I was not raised with strong values and strong morals and so I had to rely on society to teach me its ways. I am just so strong about the power of a nuclear family and the importance of having parents who are role models, who are good role models because a lot of women and men, a lot of boys and girls are growing up without that. Without a nuclear family, without strong um, parent role models. And I think that's certainly one of the reasons as to why society has gotten so incredibly screwed up. It doesn't take a scientist to look outside and come to the conclusion of we're not doing well. That, you know, society is actually regressing in all aspects. Mental health disorders, skyrocketing, antidepressant usage, skyrocketing, chronic diseases, skyrocketing. More people are obese and overweight. More people are just in general sad and unfulfilled. Um, and the list goes on and on. So these are all symptoms of a society that is collapsing physically, morally. Again, it doesn't take a scientist. It's just basic observation and, and knowing the facts and the statistics. I'm not making this stuff up you could find this out anywhere. If the Western culture has gotten to be this bad, if it's rotting this bad, you come to question the values or the lack of values that us Americans have. And you come to question the things that we are getting taught by society. And there's just a lot of reasons behind why we've gotten to where we are. I think the most basic explanation I could give you without going too deep into explaining things is just modern day feminism. Um, its goal, one of its goals is to make men and women equals. And I wanna make it absolutely clear, we're not talking about legal rights. 
that has been long established and won in first wave feminism. We've we've gotten that. We were we've gotten that already. There's no problem in terms of that. It's about breaking basic biology. Basic biological differences between the two sexes, man and woman. Modern day feminism is like these these gender differences, right? That are manifested externally are all created by the patriarchy. It's all a cultural thing that they are wrong and they're actually oppressive to uh, men and women. I think that's why we are living in a world where more men are becoming more like women and more women are becoming more like men. I think a big contrib uh, contributor to that is also the birth control pill. And I talked about this extensively in one of my previous videos about the birth control pill, which if you have not seen yet, go check it out. I spent so many hours researching the pill and also going into its consequences, not just on a individual woman, but on society at large. Hundreds of millions of women are taking the birth control pill worldwide. How could that not have a greater effect on the world? It's a huge contributor into why we are, how we are the way we are now with dating. But long story short, the values um, that are getting taught right now to women and to men in society, I do not subscribe to them because I do not think they are of any benefit to women and to men and that's that so now that i've gotten that over with let's get started with the real topic first things first i'm just gonna come out and say this straight i believe women are disrespecting themselves if they ask to split the bill on the first date i think that this shows low standards in a woman and before I get into why I think that way, it's important for me to talk about a couple of things first. So one of the women I love, love, love listening to on YouTube um, is Mina Irfan. I came across um, a couple of her videos through TikTok and I was like, who is this woman? I need to listen to her YouTube videos. Like, where's this content? And I found her on YouTube and I've probably listened to dozens of hours of her YouTube videos. She has completely rewired my brain. She is like that mother I've never had in my life. And I, like my brain has just been blown listening to her. One of my big goals for 2023 is to become more feminine. Um, throughout the years, accumulating trauma, also being a startup founder, also falling into modern day feminism, I have become very, 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 very masculine. And I have completely disconnected from my emotions side, from my like inner feminine um, to the point where like, I, I don't even, I didn't even know how to be feminine, right? Um, I could intellectualize it, you know, what is femininity, but um, it's, way different to actually be feminine. And so Mina Irfan has been one of the women that I have just appreciated so much because I have learned so much from this woman. And so I recommend anyone who is trying to become more connected with their feminine to check out her YouTube videos because she's truly one of a kind. And so a couple of things I learned from her actually last night, I was um, watching one of her YouTube videos before I went to bed. And there are a couple of things I so want to mention in this video. And the first one is that men are inherent providers. Mina said that 99.9% .9 of men are providers. And the ones that don't provide for you is most likely because you are in your masculine woman energy. So it's not because those men aren't providers, it's because you yourself, the energy and the vibes you get off are too masculine. So why would a man want to provide for a woman like that? I've experienced this in my own life plenty of times. I have experienced kind of being more masculine and being more feminine and noticing the vast difference between how I get treated by men. Men ultimately mirror women. And so depending on your energy, depending on how you are, men are going to mirror you. Men are going to adapt to whatever vibe you give off. It's a crazy difference. Um, I wrote down, if you're a woman who's in her masculine energy, you will trigger a man's conserve energy mode. Because if you, let's say, put a lot of energy and effort into the relationship. And if you do the whole 50-50 thing and it's all like an equals partnership, right? Um, then the man will be like, okay, I don't have to give 
much effort into this. I don't have to invest that much into this. Um, and to a man, providing is putting in a bunch of effort. It takes a lot of energy to do that. So another crazy thing I learned from Mina, game changing stuff, is that a man falls in love through providing and investing in that woman. It makes total sense because if you observe certain relationships and perhaps how you've gotten treated in like previous or current relationships, like it is so obvious that a man is more serious about a woman the more he provides and invests in her. I'm gonna get a little bit personal here and give you some examples of how I acted when I was in my pure masculine. I thought it was a good thing to make it known to the man that like, I don't need much help, that I'm totally independent and that I don't need a man to provide for me because I got my own, right? I'd always just be disappointed in the way they end up treating me and the way a man ends up treating me with that type of attitude. I'm like, well, doesn't that make me special that I could provide for myself? Doesn't that make me like, um, you know, ahead of the curve? Isn't it cool that I could provide for myself and I'm, you know, not dependent on a man for anything? And I realized that this is not the type of woman that men want. This is not the type of woman that men will provide for. This goes back to the first point where I talked about when a woman shows up in her masculine energy, the man is going to the man is going to trigger his conserve energy mode subconsciously. He's just like not going to be full on provider. And I was always wondering like why there are women who get this princess treatment and we all know what princess treatment means, right? And I was like, well, why, what's wrong with me that I am not getting this? There must be something wrong with me. It has to be an energy. It has to be an attitude type of thing. It can't be like externally, let's say that I'm not as pretty as a girl next to me. Um, it can't, that can't be the reason why I'm not receiving princess treatment. I realized that it's just all about the energy and the vibe you give off. And so because I came in way too much with the masculine energy, guys were not giving me prin princess treatment. I was like, where is it? Like, I want this, but like, it's not here. It's because I was brainwashed because I thought I had to act a certain way. Um, and I thought that would impress the man, but like women by nature, like you should not have to impress a man. It is a man's job to impress a woman. This is just like evolutionary biology. And so ugh, this is another thing that we'll talk about in a later video, but regardless, man falls in love with a woman by investing and providing for her. This is something I learned from Mina. Mina is a goddess. Hey, whatever Mina says, I listen, okay? I listen. So now going on to the third thing, I believe this is a very important question that every woman should ask herself in any circumstance. It is, what is the story I want to tell? What is the story I want to tell to my friends, to my future children, to my family, to those around me? Do I want to tell a story of how I met my husband with the narrative of, yeah, you know, we just went on a date and we split 50-50 and he didn't really court me. He didn't really buy me any flowers, maybe like just on Valentine's Day. And, you know, yeah, I mean, he's a good guy, but ultimately I just, I don't know, I didn't really feel special. It just, it was kind of like a relationship that was, like just comfortable, right? Or do you wanna tell a story to your future children that goes along the lines of, oh my gosh, your father just treated me so incredibly well. He planned all the dates, paid for all the dates, bought me flowers, like opened the door all the time, just made me feel like a queen. Is that the story you wanna tell or do you wanna tell the first story? This is not a question that your parents should answer. It's not a question that anyone should answer for you. It's just something that you need to assess and think about for yourself. What kind of story do you want to tell? And this is why I'm not a fan of dating apps. Um, I just am not. There's nothing like inherently wrong with dating apps. It's just one of the reasons why I'm so like off put by it naturally. It's not a mental thing. It's just naturally inside. There's something that's like, Ugh, I don't like this. And it's because if I hypothetically, let's say I marry a man through a dating app or like I go into a relationship with a man through a dating app. Like, I just don't want to tell the story of, yeah, I met my husband by swiping uh, through hundreds of people first. 
Like this is just not the thing that I want to tell. And it's the same thing for that guy because guys go through like hundreds of swipes, right? Way more than women do. I even have friends who met their boyfriends, met their fiancés through dating apps. So for some people it works, but for me, I just, it gives me the ick. I can't be incredibly funny if I actually find my future husband on a dating app, but like, like God, like, please, that's not happening. That's not the story I want to tell. So I am not available for that. Okay. Like, let's not, <laughs> I, it's not happening. <laughs> so long story short, this is a question that can only be answered by you. There's no right or wrong answer here. It's whatever story you want to tell and believe that you are worthy of achieving, of getting that story. Now we go into why I think women should never ask to split the bill on the first date. Um, I think the first thing, super easy. I think most of the women who are asking that question don't even want to split the bill 50-50. They are just trying to sound nice. I think a lot of women can attest to this. Leave a comment below if this is you. I've just heard many stories of women being like, I asked just to be nice, but I hope, I pray that the man is like, no, 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 no. I don't want you to pay for the bill. Like I got it fully, I'll take care of you. My kind of rule of thumb for these sorts of things and just in general in life, you don't mean something, don't say it. If you don't actually want to split the bill 50-50, don't ask the man to split 50 50. the second thing is that for the entire span of humankind men have always been the providers it is now in our backwards and regressed society that that's not becoming the case i think it's incredibly important to allow a man to provide for you if you want a provider and you don't know how to receive yourself that's gonna be a big problem. You're not going to find that provider man and a man is not going to provide for you. This is another thing I learned from Mina. She was talking about creating a love list, which is essentially a list of like qualities that you want in your future husband. And she goes a step further and talks about, are you a woman that can receive these qualities? So for example, if you want a man who is funny, are you going to laugh at his jokes? Right? If you want a man to provide, will you be able to receive? Those questions are very, very important. That's completely mind changing. I, again, Mina is the bomb.com. The last thing that I wanna talk about, and this is kind of the least important thing, but a woman puts in so much effort into the way she looks on dates. She makes sure that everything is done. Everything is done and perfect, okay? Hair done, outfit amazing, makeup done nails done like shave the legs and all of those sorts of areas like all of that is done all of that is great she is in tip toppity shape that is a lot of investment that's a lot of effort a woman puts into her looks to ensure that she is looking top notch and then you have the date with the guy and then at the end of the date you ask oh you know can i venmo you back or like oh can i paypal you back or oh yeah let's let's split 50 50. that's just Really, you, you spent all the time getting ready and you, it's, no. Again, I, I think it's disrespectful. Just don't do it. Logistically, that doesn't even make sense. You put in so much energy and time and you ask it, well, I can't. There are going to be some women who say, well, I feel like I owe the guy something if he pays for my date, which is why I offer to split the bill 50-50. And it's like, that's a mental thing get that out of your head. You do not owe a man anything. If he pays for your date, this is what he should be doing. See, this is the thing. This is the standard. This is the bare minimum. The bare minimum is a guy should pay for the first date. Always. Okay. To think that you owe him something if he does that is just, is completely beyond me. Okay. Get rid of that mindset. So now, Let's say that you went on a date with this man, you know, the check is coming and he is the one who initiates the 50-50 split. Well, I think 99.9% .9 of women would not even go on a second date with that man. It's just, it's against our nature. For me personally, those types of vibes are like completely platonic friend vibes. That solidifies where he stands in my mind. He stands in my mind as a friend. I will never, ever, ever see him as husband material. There's something in my biology that just does not comprehend that type of behavior behavior, and will never see it in a romantic sense at all, okay? 
the type of man I want to marry is a provider, okay? Because for me, I want a family one day. I want children one day. I do not want to work when I am pregnant and am trying to raise children, okay? I want to be fully provided for. This is why women should be picky, especially if they want to have families one day. Because you have to ask, what kind of life do you want to live when you are pregnant? Do you want to still work that 9 to 5 job? Do you want to still hustle? Or do you want to take care of your stress levels, just overall fulfillment levels? Do you want to take care, focus on taking care of your children? If this is something that you care a lot about and want to optimize during that time of your life, you need to pick a man, you need to choose a man, find a man who, attract a man, <laughs> who can provide that type of lifestyle for you. So this is very, very important, right? What kind of life do you want to live? What kind of story do you want to tell? Yeah, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this. And again, this might not align for some people, but I think for a lot of women, it will align. So all I wanted to say, my voice is getting tired. I'm still recovering from being sick. So I need to drink some tea or a cappuccino. Hope you all enjoyed this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye.